Hey everybody, Michael Pelvich here, and as you can see, Zen C Labs has sent me a pen tablet medium bundle. For the last three weeks or so, I've been taking it through the paces, seeing if it'll hold up. And of course, the first thing I did was take it into ZBrush to make sure it was usable. Uh, after 15 years of using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet, I'm kind of picky about feel and performance in ZBrush. And I can report back that it performed perfectly. Navigation is super responsive, which for me is important because I tend to move around ZBrush kind of quickly. Uh, and my initial reaction when I was doing some organic sculpting was that it was a little more feather touch than I was used to, but after using the Zensi tablet and other programs, it turns out it was because I was used to my ancient Wacom 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity uh, rather than the Zensi tablet, which has 8192 levels of pressure. Uh, so I was picking up a lot of the nuance in my movements, uh, which of course isn't a bad thing, but if you want to make any changes, the tablet and pen settings are super robust. You have complete control over your application specific pen pressure. So you can make it look and feel exactly how you want in whatever program you're using. Um, the only weird thing about ZBrush specifically, as of this recording, was that I didn't need Windows Ink turned on in the settings. For every other program I did, but for ZBrush, having that off actually gave me the optimal experience and the pressure sensitivity worked just fine. Uh, for extended functionality, let's also talk about the buttons. The tablet itself has three buttons at the top that are customizable to whatever application you're using. But the bundle also comes with a quick keys module that's uh, super slick, at least for someone like me that's a fairly vanilla tablet user. The dial has four customizable modes and you can color code the ring so that it knows what mode you're in. For example, uh, in ZBrush later on in this video, we're gonna use the pre-existing preset modes to do a zoom and then change the breast size, change the cycle through uh, subdivisions. And just to show how easy it is to customize, we go ahead and set up a custom dial mode to cycle through subtools. Again, set it up to whatever makes sense for you to use it in whatever program you're using. It also has customizable quick keys. So you have five sets, uh, each with eight buttons for a total of 40 custom buttons for any program that you're using. Again, later on in this video, we're gonna go through and set up our own custom set to show you how easy it is. And as an added bonus, you can cycle through sets and tab through different programs on your computer and you'll see it update the buttons labeled on the OLED readout. The tablet also comes with not one, but two pins, both battery free. Uh, one is the pin size and shape you're probably used to, and the other is a uh, thinner stylus type. Uh, the thin one has two buttons that you can program and has an eraser, and then the larger pin has three programmable buttons uh, and an eraser. Of course, you can set these buttons to just like anything else in Zensi, and you can disable it if it concerns you. And since you have two pins, you can have one set up where the settings are perfect for like drawing and sketching, let's say, and another one set up for markers and painting, and you can just grab which pin you need on the fly. Um, or, of course, just use a pin that, builds, uh, that feels best for you. I'll also cover this during the unboxing later, uh, but I'll mention it here too. It comes with a pin case, nibs, nib extractor, and a wireless dongle if you don't want to use either of the two provided USB-C cables. And if you don't like the usual slick standard nibs, you can use the felt nibs. You'll get six standard and uh, four felt in the bundle. Uh, anyway, after ZBrush, I hopped into Substance Painter where it worked as expected. Just something to note, it had pulled by default an old version of Painter I had installed, but it's super easy to either browse to the application you want to control or just have the application running and it'll be right there to grab and customize. In Painter, I ran through the navigation, brush size and hardness, different brush types, and everything worked great. To be clear, in regards to my previous statement, for the rest of the programs, Windows Ink is turned on in the settings, which is the default, so you won't need to worry about it. Uh, and also to be clear about general tablet issues, I'm no stranger to you know, WinTab and Flix and Windows Ink. Basically, Windows and tablet drivers creating all kinds of fun headaches for artists across multiple applications for the past 15 years. Uh, but I have to say, I didn't run into any issues with the Zen C tablet. Next, we went into Photoshop, and I know nobody's on this channel to watch me do 2D stuff, but I do draw on occasion, so I needed to make sure everything was working as expected there. Again, I'm not a super illustrator or concept artist, but for my purposes, the tablet, again, was super responsive. I tried a few different brushes, played around with the tilt functionality, which has 60 degrees of support, and everything seemed just fine by me. Uh, after that, I launched Clip Studio and did some basic sketching, nothing super fancy. I was already in love with Clip Studio's brush engine, and this was a program where I really felt those 8192 levels of pressure. This was as close as I've been to getting an actual pencil to paper feel while drawing. And again, I'm not much of a drawer, so don't take the results as indicative of any sort of quality, but if you're a Clip Studio power user, I think you'll be super happy with the Zensi tablet performance. It felt like butter to me. 
Finally, I went into Maya just for some basic functionality testing. Uh, I only need pressure sensitivity while I'm painting weights, so I had Windows Ink on for that. Uh, but for the rest of the modeling and navigation, I just had that off for more responsiveness. Uh, the right-click menus and quick gesture menu selection work perfectly. The only thing I'll say here is that the Wacom pen I had for my old Intuos is nearly identical to the larger of the Zensi pens. Um, and the Wacom pen will actually work on the Zensi tablet. Uh, the only thing that doesn't translate is the button functionality. Uh, and I found that out the hard way, since I didn't realize I was using the wrong pen in Maya for a minute. So uh, maybe keep your old Wacom pen in a drawer somewhere, maybe. Uh, all in all, I'm super impressed with the Zensi Labs offering here. Uh, the performance was great, customization is straightforward and intuitive, and most importantly, it worked right out of the box for me. So not a ton of windows and tablet driver hoops to jump through, uh, which like I mentioned before, could be a real headache. And the build quality of everything is super. It's heavy duty on the pen case here. And if you're a hotkey wrangler, those quick keys are a must have. Uh, the supplied carrying case is also a great addition if you travel with your tablet a lot. And like I'll bring up later in the video, uh, the tablet itself is sleek and lightweight. It's actually smaller and lighter than my previous tablet and actually has a larger working area. So bonus there, <laughs> there's no excessive uh, nib wear in the three weeks that I've used it and no wear on the tablet itself. So overall, I think we've got a winner here. I'll go ahead and say I highly recommend this tablet. And if anything new happens, of course, I'll follow up with another video. So thanks for watching and stick around if you wanna see me uh, do the unboxing, general functionality walkthroughs, and uh, some time lapses of the tablet in action. All righty, we got the Zensi Labs Pen Tablet Medium Bundle. Let's go ahead and check out what's in the box. Oh, merci, uh, danke, it's getting her good. Let's check this out. We got our medium tablet in here. Let's open the bag. Very nice. My hands for scale. Looks like we got a couple buttons along the top here. Very lightweight, very thin. And then there's the USB-C connector right back there where the buttons are. We got a little travel sleeve. Two layers of pockets. It's aligned with a very soft material in here. And then in the front looks like you can put your pins and your buttons and anything else, maybe some snacks. Very cool, we got a very nice pin case. Right up here we have your pin nibs. We've got six standard and four felt. We have a nib extraction ring. Use this little uh, thing to clip on the end of your nib and just pull it out. And on this tablet, you can use the USB connection or you can use this dongle right here for wireless. And if you needed an adapter for that, here's USB-A to USB-C. And the bigger pin is the three button pin. You can see two up here at the top and then one closer to the nib. And of course the eraser in the back. And then up here we have the thin pin. Looks like this one just has two buttons up front and then the eraser in the back. Here's the quick keys. Has a nice little rubberized surface on the back so it'll prevent it from sliding. Little turn knob, button up here. Looks like four buttons on the bottom, four buttons on the top. And then on this side here, you've got a little on. And I haven't used this yet, so I don't want to get too far, but there's a little LEDs. So we'll need to connect this uh, to the computer and install the driver, fair enough. Warranty policy, little sticker. And we've got two USB-C cables. See, this one's just flat. And I don't have a measuring tape with me, but I'm, I'm about 6'3", so uh, these look to be about seven feet long. And then on this one here, you've got the bent USB-C. Here we've got a medium glove, nice and smooth. And I think that's it. So let's get this thing plugged in and working. So now I've got a setup here, and so here's the Zenolabs, and then here's the uh, old Intuos that I'm replacing with this one for this demo. You're also gonna see here that the workable area on this one is about nine inches and about five and a half. And then here is the uh, tablet. You can see the tablet overall is smaller. There's less bevels around, but it's also a little bit thinner and lighter weight. And the working area is actually a little bit larger. It's about 10 inches uh, by five and three quarters ish. Yeah, the first thing we need to do before we install even the driver is to plug this in either with a uh, one of the two supplied USB cables or take this remote dongle and plug it into your computer. 
And since I'm gonna be on my computer anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in with a cord here and we'll go ahead and jump back into the computer. And let's go down here, let's get started. Select and go for the pen tablet bundle. It's gonna tell us what's in the box. Here's a quick start PDF. And if you keep scrolling down, you can see here's the download drivers. We'll go ahead and grab that for Windows. And we've already plugged in our tablet and you can go ahead and start using your pen as is. Uh, of course, you want any extra functionality, you're gonna want the driver. So we've downloaded uh, the Windows version. I'm gonna go ahead and just run this EXE for the driver. We're gonna use both. And we'll go ahead and click Guided Setup. Looks like it found everything. And by default, those top buttons are gonna be the launch settings, adjust pressure and switch display, which you can of course customize later on. You can customize your pen tip pressure. We can go ahead and set it to display one for now. And let's figure out where I want my keys here. I think I'm gonna put it next to the tablet with the dial at the top here. And I use quite a few of those, so those will be interesting to go ahead and modify. Cool. And here's the Sensi Labs settings window. So we've got home here. We can go into the pen tablet, uh, clicking here or on the little sidebar here. You can change your corner lights to a different color, change the brightness, change what these buttons do, and it's application dependent. So if you want to have those buttons do something different in Photoshop or have these lights be a different color uh, when we're in Painter, ZBrush, or Photoshop, you can do that as well. And let me just cut in here really quick to demo that. So basically uh, in my ZBrush color menu right here, I have a button for fill object with color and I have an assign hotkey for that, which is Control Alt F. So while I'm in ZBrush, when I hit, if I choose a color in here and I hit Control Alt F, it'll fill the object uh, with whatever color I have selected. And like we were mentioning before, these are all program specific. So these top three buttons right here, if I go over here, so you can see here's left, middle, right button, I'm gonna say right button. You can go through here, you can choose a modifier. So if you want that to be your shift key or alt key or whatever, you can do that. But what we're gonna do is go in here to keystroke and I'm gonna say color fill and the keystroke keys, I'm gonna do control alt F. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now whenever I'm in ZBrush, whenever I hit this button, it's gonna do a color fill. So I don't even have to use a hotkey for that. I can just be in ZBrush, have my subtool selected, hit that button on my tablet, and that'll go ahead and run that hotkey for me. So for just our global settings, I'm just gonna keep everything the same. And here is where you're gonna see the Windows ink clicked on. We're gonna go ahead and keep that clicked on. Down here under the three button pin, we have the uh, pin pressure. Here's advanced settings. You can go through here and change this. So if you go through here, you can kind of scribble and then adjust these settings on the fly here. So you can do your thick to thin. I'm a little bit of a lighter touch, so I might keep this cranked down, but you know, let's go ahead and keep this at the default for now. This is interesting. You can go in here to your eraser and you can give it any sort of functionality that you'd like. Top button. I think I'm gonna set this one to middle click and then this one down here to right click. And this very bottom one, I'm gonna disable it for now until I kind of get used to a feel. Thin pin, I'm gonna change this here to, again, right click and middle click because I use that to kind of navigate in some programs. And of course you can change this for any application if you want these to have different buttons do different things in different programs. You have these all up here, and of course you can add your own applications. You can just browse to them and add them. Uh, but they seem to be pretty robust. You know, it's, they've gone through and looked at what I have, so I think that'll work. And then here's my quick keys. So we'll go back here to Photoshop. So you can see in Photoshop also you have sketch and then paint, and there's more options here. So you have uh, set A, B, C, D, and E. You can go in here and you can disable or re-enable or configure your sets to whatever options you're gonna need for whatever program you might be using. So for example, over here under ZBrush, we have Sculpt, Paint, and 3D Mode, and there's options for two more sets. So of course, you can go through here and you can rename these and again, assign these functionality keys to whatever you might use uh, a lot. You're also gonna see here, uh, as I scroll over these Mode 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 4 has been disabled, but Mode 1, 2, and 3 have different colors. So this one is set to uh, red and it's gonna zoom, and then when you go to Mode 2, it's gonna be brush size. When you go to Mode 3, it's gonna cycle subdivisions, which is cool. And again, if you wanna customize any of this, just click on here and you can change the color that shows up, how bright it is, the dial sensitivity, what this actually does, etc. So uh, very, very customizable. All right, I'm just gonna hop in here to show that off so you can kind of understand a little bit better. So uh, again, my quick keys, the dial click sequence is essentially what that dial is gonna control. So in ZBrush mode one, it's gonna have a red ring around it. And when I use that, it's gonna zoom and then it's gonna do brush size in mode two and you can switch between mode one and mode two. I'm gonna click this little button in the middle. Uh, mode three is cycle subdivisions. Mode four is just disabled. So I'm gonna go in here to options enable and we're gonna change this to keystroke. 
And I'm just gonna do up arrow key and then down arrow key. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it a name and we'll say this is gonna go through, say cycle sub tools here. So we'll say, okay. The color is set to green. So we're gonna say, okay. So now when I'm in ZBrush here and I'm cycling through my modes, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna click the middle button so I'm in the red mode. And then when I do, when I cycle left and right, it's gonna zoom in and out. When I hit the button again, it's going to change to my brush size modes. You're gonna see the brush size mode uh, is making my brush size bigger or smaller, obviously. Mode three is gonna cycle through my subdivision. So you're gonna see if I go down here to geometry, it's going from subdivision level one to two to three to four, and then back down again. And then one more, this is gonna go through my sub tools. So if I go back to my sub tool menu here, as I cycle, it's gonna go up. And then as I cycle back the other way, it's gonna go down. So I can just kind of cycle through my sub tools like that. Uh, one more thing I should mention is back here in the zoom, that's gonna zoom in wherever your brush is. So if you want to zoom in in the corner of the head, just you know, zoom in and then zoom back out with the little dial. If you wanna zoom in on his nose, just hover over his nose and then zoom in. So that's how easy it is to set up, you know, what this dial quick key does and how to cycle through the modes. So just like the dial sequence up here, you're also gonna have a bunch of buttons down here that you can control. And by default, again, we're just playing with ZBrush, but you can go in here to Photoshop, Clip Studio, Maya, whatever you wanna use, and these will all be set up customizable however you'd like. So down here, as I hover over these, you can see here's button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And how you switch between these modes here is that uh, little button right here that lights up. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different sets. By clicking this button, you've got five different sets that control eight different buttons. So you've got an opportunity for 40 different customizable buttons in here, depending on what mode you're in. By default, ZBrush has sculpt mode in here, uh, paint mode, 3D mode. Let's go ahead and set up our own custom mode just to show you how to do it. So here's set D, you can see it's uh, grayed out. So I'm gonna go in here to options. We're gonna say enable set D. Let's go back in here to options and I'm gonna say rename set D to, let's call it path custom. So uh, button number one in my, in ZBrush here, I've got a custom menu. It's uh, set to a hotkey, so it's uh, Alt-A is a hotkey for that. So instead of undo, let's go in here to keystroke, and we're gonna rename this to custom menu. And then for my keystroke keys, I'm gonna hit clear, and then we're gonna do uh, Alt-A, and then I'm gonna say okay. So now whenever I'm in PAV custom mode, number one is gonna be set to custom menu, and that's gonna fire off Alt-A and ZBrush. So when I'm in here, I'm gonna hit the button so I'm in uh, Path Custom, and then I'm gonna hit my Custom Menu button, and that's gonna fire off my custom menus. No matter where my cursor is, that's going to bring up my custom menu, and I can go in here and select what I want. Back in here, let's go to button number two. Brush I use a lot when I'm doing creature brushes is, is a damn standard 02. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this one. And I have that set to Alt Z, so I'm gonna say okay. So now when I'm in ZBrush and I have that custom menu selected and I hit the new button I have set up, it's gonna automatically switch to my damn standard 02. And then again, button number one is going to switch to my custom menu. Uh, so if I switch back to like say my standard brush and then again hit damn 02 button on my uh, quick keys and then hit the button number one back to my custom menu. So you can see how easy it is to very quickly set up custom key sequences or you don't you're not limited to just that you're going to see there's a bunch of modifiers in here you can set the buttons to tablet functionality navigation functionality application functionality mouse clicks set it to eraser disable it whatever you want to do and you're also going to see as i switch between say zbrush and photoshop the quick select buttons are going to switch on the fly and then if i want to change to different modes i can just hit this button down here and it goes to the paint mode and then it goes to sketch mode and Photoshop. And then if I hop over here to ZBrush, I'm in mode number one. And then I can go to uh, ZBrush paint mode and then ZBrush 3D mode and then cycle back to ZBrush sculpt mode. And then as far as wheel functionality, uh, you know what this does, you can click in here. And so by default, it's set to the zoom functionality. This will go to ZBrush size. This will go to three cycle subdivision. And that color is going to update on the wheel with whatever color you had updated in the application settings. One other thing I wanted to bring up was when we did the initial wizard setup, it set our orientation. You can also do that here under, uh, you know, here's my quick keys under customize. You can say set quick keys orientation. So if you have it uh, in this direction, you all you need to do is go in here and change that. You can also go over here to the dial click sequence and you can click on this button here and you can move these around. So if you want mode two to actually be the first thing, then you can go through here and just move that. Of course, you can also click in here, go to options and say rename mode two to whatever you want. So if mode two doesn't make much sense, then obviously feel free to rename that. But we'll go ahead and put mode two back down here and then click out of that. 
Also under customize, if you want to change rename quick keys, because my quick keys is the default, you can go through here and you can rename that as well. And one last thing I want to cover is if we go down here to the preferences tab, you're going to see you can choose to use all of your tablet area on your pen tablet uh, or sections of it. So if you want to define a portion, you know, change the screen ratio, that's all in this section here. But I'm going to use the entire pen tablet surface area. But over here on my monitor, you're going to see I have it set to portion. So by default, it's probably going to be set to display one. Um, so if you're using a 1920 by 1080 monitor, I'll probably work, but I'm using, you know, it's two very large monitors and really I'm only working within this little gray box section right there. So I'm going to set this to portion and then I can go through. There's a couple different ways you can define uh, the screen area. You can click and drag in here and just select the area of your screen that you want to capture. So in my case, I could just click and drag and, and this is a, that this is an image on my desktop that's telling me where to put this. Or you can say define screen area. You just click here and you're going to put your little red uh, upper left corner here so it's going to tap uh, right here and then in the lower right right here and that's going to put uh, your screen area in that area 